So I don't usually get too many people on these TikTok live streams. So what I do here is I'll just talk about a few things. And then I take this, I download it, and then edit it and upload it to my YouTube channel, which is where my viewer base actually is. I have a pretty large and substantial viewer base on YouTube. Uh, what this is basically centered around is an announcement that I have decided upon a date for the webinar I'm about to do, the Correct Sentence Structure, Communication, Parse, Syntax, Grammar, uh, two to three hour webinar that I'm doing. It is going to be on August the 8th at 1400 hours Eastern Standard Now Space, i.e. 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. That's the date. Now, the participant, uh, the participant number has been locked. I've had this up for a few weeks now. I've announced it here, and I've also announced it on YouTube. For those that want to attend, they can contact me at my email address. And so, uh, it filled up pretty fast, and now so it's closed. So no one else can attend. Uh, if this one goes off without a hitch and it's uh, pretty smooth, I will hold another one in a month or two. So you're more than welcome to sign up for that one if you want to. But this one's closed. Um, so for those of you listening, and I'm, I'm basically speaking to my YouTube viewers because I know that not too many people on TikTok are going to be seeing this as it's live, which is a... It baffles me because you got people that film themselves sleeping and they get thousands of views. And then you get someone that's uh, promoting correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, and they, and they don't get any views. It's strange to me what people value. But it's cool. You know, this is just an, exper an experiment. So what I'm saying is that I will, I have sent out an email to every participant that applied I've already sent out an email with the date and the time location that this webinar is taking place now it's up to you as the participant to answer back yes that you can attend and if you can attend then at that point I will then send you an email with details of where to send your minimum donation gift of $42 and when I receive that then I, in turn, will gift you a two to three hour webinar having to do with correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Um, and what it's focusing on is it's focusing on how to create a correct sentence structure, communication on the spot, lickety split, boom, 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 off the top of your head and be correct about it. For when you're in those types of situations where you have to think on your feet, where you have to improvise. And then, of course, I will do probably an hour or so Q&A. Where you can ask me whatever you want to ask. And that's how it works. I will say that this TikTok thing isn't quite working out the way that I envisioned that it would. I mean, the way that my subscriber, my follower base grew so fast. I got over a thousand subscribers very fast. Much faster than YouTube. Um, so I thought that when I went live that I would get like at least 25% of those followers to participate. Which is not the case at all. Like, there's barely 1% participating, which is interesting. But that's cool. You know, this is an experiment. And uh, if this is not worth it to me, then I'll just delete my account and uh, stick to YouTube. Very few people are able to be successful across different platforms. It's very difficult for a content creator to be successful on YouTube and also be successful on 
Facebook, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram. It's very hard to do that. Usually people have one platform that they're very successful on and that's it. And I find that to be the case here. I think that, you know, and this is just speaking from my own personal experience on TikTok. I think that people here just tend to have a, a very short attention span. Like if, if there's not something that's dramatic or uh, emotionally riveting, they just scroll by it. And go on to the next thing. And that's cool. You know, that's for the young folks, I suppose. They like that stuff. I'm obviously not of this generation. <laughs> I'm, uh, well, how could you say it? Over half a century old. So I definitely come from a different viewpoint I don't come from the short attention span theater types of people which is you know I hope that there are at least a couple people out there in TikTok land that that see the value in correct grammar that see the value in becoming a steward of their construct of taking mastery of their own biosphere Stopping the bureaucratic trespass of the fiction system from taking advantage of them. Because if you think about it, like if you, I'll use this analogy, you walk into a supermarket, you walk into a grocery store, and you pick up any food product, you know that there are certain food products that have um, ingredients that aren't so good for you. They're actually bad for you. They're negative for you. Like certain kinds of sugars, certain kinds of colors, certain kinds of preservatives. They're not good for you. Plastics and so on and so forth. So you can choose to eliminate, eliminate those things from your diet. And you can choose to eat healthy. It's the same thing with grammar. When you use grammar with you, when you start studying the words, you will find that there are particles of negation in the words. Just like in your food, there are poisonous elements. In your grammar, there are also poisonous elements in the words. Particles that mean no. And so you're walking around all day using these words that mean no. When you think they mean something completely different. So think about it, using that analogy, if you're eating a diet that has a lot of these elements in them, these particles, these food particles, preservatives, whatever they are, sweeteners in them that are poisonous, over years you're going to develop problems because of it. It's going to cause you health issues. Your health is going to decline. You're going to get sick. It's going to manifest in one way or another in a negative way. It's the same thing with grammar. Psychologically, if you're using these words and you don't know that there are particles of negation in them, psychologically, it's going to cause you, over time, it's going to cause you to be, you know, perhaps depressed, uh, to have a pessimistic outlook, so on and so forth. Um, it's the same thing. So if you learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, then you become a steward of your grammar rather than being controlled by your grammar. And uh, to some people, that may be an attractive thing. You know, you may want to learn that. You may want to find out about that. The most simple, the simplest example that I can think of right now off the top of my head is the prefix be. Like if you think about when someone says, oh, uh, I befriended so-and-so. To befriend someone 
in the modern sense of the term basically means you made friends with them, right? You befriended them. You became their friend. But no, that's not really what it means when you look it up. Because think of the word behead. To behead so, uh, someone means... It, the word behead means no head. No head. So if you look at the word befriend, now it means no friend. It means the exact opposite of what you thought it meant. That's just one example of many. Probably over 50% of the words you use have these particles in them. Not to mention the particles that negate the now space, like ED, uh, like the prefixes PRE, PRI, RE, things like that. Those are all particles of negation. So with correct sentence structure, there is no modification. There are no particles of negation. It's a mathematical interface on grammar. The simplest example I can use is if you think of the mathematical problem of 1 plus 2 equals 3, 3 minus 2 equals 1. You have the, the math problem forwards, 1 plus 2 equals 3, right? And then to check the problem to see if it's correct, you would do it backwards, 3 minus 2 equals 1. The factors maintain their value forwards and backwards. The numbers maintain their integrity, their value forwards and backwards. What is different in the two equations? It's the plus and the minus sign. And in this grammar technology, the positionals maintain that condition of state as the plus and the minus or the uh, multiplication and division. There are four positionals in correct sentence structure, four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by. Of is congruent with with. The same way as plus is congruent with minus. And multiplication is congruent with division. It's a mathematical interface. And there are over 600 videos on my YouTube channel that you can study for free if you want to. I have invested thousands of hours in creating and shooting and editing these videos in the last almost six years, since February of 2018. It's my gift to you, my fellow mankind. You can go study those, and if you're actually serious about learning this stuff, then you can contact me at my email address, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com, which you can find if you, with very little effort, just click on, go to my bio, and you'll see my email address there. And you'll also see a link to my YouTube channel. You can email me, and you can request to apply for a workshop. I have an entire curriculum of this stuff. Just like walking into a college classroom. Only it's you and I, one-on-one. -on -one. You can apply for that. If you send me an email and you include your full correct name, I don't know why people just email me and they don't include their name or they just use a first name or a nickname. Like, <laughs> I guess that's just the younger generation. They just feel that they don't need to credential themselves. You know my full correct name. I just ask the same consideration of you. You, you have to step forward into the light and share your correct name. Be transparent. Hold your position. Use your correct name when you email me. So I know who you are because you know who I am. And then I will schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consult. And then you can, add, during that video consultation, you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. And we'll see if this is something that you're willing to commit to, that you're serious about. Because it is a very serious uh, endeavor. It definitely is a serious endeavor. Not something to be taken lightly. So. What is going on here? Again. You know, this is... Live stream number five, 
it looks like I have 200 and I have almost 300 likes for this live stream. Yet it says I have two people watching. That's crazy to me. I, th that can't be right. That cannot be right. <laughs> Let me see if I can do... Uh... If I can do a poll here. Let me try and do a poll. There. I just put a poll in there. If uh, any of the 300 or so people that have liked this live stream feel squarely they can participate with the poll but the poll disappeared I'm not quite sure where the poll went huh. wow I guess maybe I should uh, download the live stream studio. Maybe I can get some some better closure on it there. So again, uh, the webinar, <clears throat> the webinar I'm holding uh, is going to be. It's going to take place on August eighth. 2023 at 1400 hours Eastern Standard Now Space. Attendance is closed. Uh, I've reached capacity. I've already sent out an email to everyone who applied. And <clears throat> what you need to do if you're one of those applicants is just email me back. Yes, that you can attend. And then at that point, I will send you the details on where to send your donation, your gift. And then once I receive that gift, I will email you back a, conf a confirmation. And you'll be locked in. Your place will be secured. And then shortly before the scheduled time, I will send you out a confidential link to the webinar. And then you can attend, and we'll go from there. That's how it's going to work. Someone named yes-we-can said syntax. S-I-N-T-A-X. Syntax. And with a question mark. I don't know what that means. I don't know if that's a... I mean, there is a question mark there. But the first letter of the word syntax is not capitalized. So I don't know if that's a sentence. I don't know if that's a question. If it's a statement. If it's a misspelling. Because syntax, in the context of correct sentence structure communication, parse syntax grammar, is spelled S-Y-N-T-A-X. <clears throat> I will bet dollars to donuts that no one watching this live stream knows what syntax actually is. I bet that if someone asked them, what, is, what does it mean? What does syntax mean? I bet they wouldn't be able to answer it. Eh, you know, I'm not picking on anybody. I'm saying that this modern generation just doesn't have grammatical knowledge for some reason. They speak in memes, they speak in emojis, they don't speak in, you know, the English that was taught. You know, if you look at, geez, if you look at the way people wrote in the 70s or even 80s, way different than the way people write now. And then if you look at the way people wrote in the late 1800s or early 1900s, huge difference between, you know, 100 years ago and 100 years before that. The 
the education has just gone downhill. No one is interested in speaking correctly. Writing correctly, I should say. Because speaking and writing is two different things. Two completely different things. That's why correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is so potent, so powerful. As the late Colin David Eiffel and Colin Miller used to say, it's like taking a wrecking ball to swat a fly. And I myself have added on to that saying, it's like dropping a nuclear bomb to swat a fly. That's how, how potent correct sentence structure is if you know how to use it correctly. Nobody. Wow. I'm looking at the uh, stats here. We have 343 likes, almost three, 350 likes. We have 27 viewers. Awesome. Awesome sauce. It's going up and up and up. So I'm going to repeat again. My webinar, my two to three hour webinar, Correct Sentence Structure, Communication, Parsing, Syntax, Grammar webinar is going to take place on August 8th of 2023. Uh, if you've been following me for the last month, you'll know that I've been put out, I put out notices about this on this TikTok channel. I put out notices about it on my YouTube channel. Um, I've reached capacity. Uh, applications are closed now, but I will be holding other ones in the future. So you might want to keep your eye out for that if you're interested. Uh, but it's going to be held at 1400 hours Eastern Standard Now Space on August 8th, 2023. Uh, everybody that applied, I've already sent out an email with this information, with the date and the time and all that stuff. And then all you need to do is respond back to me that you can attend. And then if you do that, then I in turn will send out to you the bank account information where you can send the donation gift. And then once I receive that, you're locked in and then I will send you the confidential link shortly before the webinar takes place and we'll go from there so let me see how this poll's doing no one <laughs> no one has participated with this poll that's interesting are people just just, I mean, I'm just talking out loud here because no one's participating in the comments either, in the chat either. But are people just afraid to comment? Is there something that they're afraid of, that they're scared of? Uh, I don't know. I really don't. Hey, thanks for the follow, uh, Kwaiko Photo. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. For this claimant's knowledge of the facts is with this claim of the puzzlement with the participation lack of the viewers with the chat field of the live stream with this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, conveyance by this claimant and by this live stream host, comma, Jason hyphen Matthew Colon Glass, period. Well, I at least hope you're enjoying the fire. Which, uh, I gotta go put that out right there.
That's Oslo. What I need to do here on TikTok is I need to expend a little effort and energy in finding some um, some of the common law people on here, some of the common lore people, <clears throat> and see if I can hop onto some of those live streams. Because that would be very interesting to get on there and uh, challenge some of those individuals. Because what people don't seem to understand is that even though, you know, common law, I understand the principle behind it, it's fiction. It comes from the fiction system. It's adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble-based content. Huge difference between that and correct sentence structure. Huge. I have had people that have studied and used common law for a decade or more who were quite successful with it and then they reached like a roadblock like they couldn't go any further with it they needed something extra because it just common law wasn't cutting it so then they contact me and want to learn correct sentence structure but the issue that they seem to run into is they don't comprehend that common law is fiction. It's part of the fiction system. It's like, I don't know if you've ever studied the Hegelian dialectic. Uh, Hegel's dialectic. Uh, but if you do that, you'll, you'll comprehend a little better what I'm talking about here is that, like if you look at the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, you have people that are so, you know, involved in this protagonist center morality type of bullshit with the Democrats and the Republicans when both of those political parties are right and left hand of the same body and they're ruled by the same head. It doesn't matter if there's a Democrat or a Republican um, at the head of the table. No change takes place. Is life any better for you than it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago? Has, has, has life gotten better? Are you working less hours, enjoying more time with your family? Your, is, does your money go further now than it did 50 years ago? Are things easier now? Are we in the golden years? Hell no. And the reason why is because it doesn't matter. It's all a circus. It's all a... Sh a bullshit show. It's a sham. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. Does not matter. It's two hands belonging to the same body ruled by the same head. You have to cut the head off. It's like I, I liken... Um, <laughs> I liken the fiction system and the government and all that. It doesn't matter where you live. I liken it to an abusive relationship. Like if you're in an abusive, a domestic violence relationship, it's like that's what the government is. It abuses you. And then you think, oh, well, this time, you know, when the election time comes up, oh, well, this time this person gets elected. Oh, now we're going to see real change. Now things are going to be different. But they're never really different, are they? No, they're not. Nothing's different. It just gets worse. And worse. So the only way to deal with it is to extricate yourself from that system. And correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is a great way to do that. If you comprehend it and get closure on it. But that's a big... That, that's a tall order for people. A lot of people... 
aren't ready for that. They aren't ready to be autonomous. They aren't ready to step out of the authoritarian construct. They're not used to uh, governing themselves. They're always saying, are we allowed to do that? Am I going to get in trouble? Am I going to get in trouble if I get a live life claim? Are my social security benefits going to get cut off if I get a live life claim? You know, the goofy things like that. And people that ask questions like that, and I don't mean goofy to make fun of people. I'm saying it from my perspective, knowing what I know, that if you're talking about it from that perspective, then you don't have closure on the grammar. That's why I always hammer home, get closure on the grammar first. And the only way to do that is to get a tutor. I don't care if it's me or if it's someone else. You have to get a tutor. You have to learn it. You have to get closure. And then you'll understand why I said that those questions are goofy. Authority comes from knowledge. You have to know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, then you have the authority. If you look at authority, the word author is in it. If you write a document, you are the author of that document. You then have authorization. You have authority over that document. And in correct sentence structure, that would be a document, contract, postal, vessel, court, venue. I am a grammar auditor and a document contract court authority i don't use the word judge i don't use the word jurisdiction or anything like that in my correct sentence structure documents simply because judge and jurisdiction are fiction words the fiction uses them i don't want any part of them i create my own domain my own biosphere my own worlds and i try to stay away from those types of things and what i will end this live stream with is Think about this, friends and neighbors. Think about the word sensation. Think about your five plus senses. That's firsthand knowledge. If you spill hot coffee on your arm and you say, ouch, that hurts. I can't say, you wimp. No, it doesn't hurt. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you what you're sensing because those are your five senses. The sense of touch, taste, smell, hearing, so on and so forth. Taste. You, you, I can't tell you what you're sensing. Well, guess what? You look in any edition of Black's Law Dictionary. Listen to me very carefully, please. You look in any edition of Black's Law Dictionary, you will not find the word sense in there. You will not find the word sensation in there. Why is that? My guess is because senses and sensations cannot be argued because that is firsthand knowledge. What comes through your port of sensation, you are the authority of. That cannot be argued. That is fact. And that's why they can never allow that into their foreign vessels and dry dock. And that's where my knowledge comes from. And I'll speak in correct sentence structure again. For this claimant's cognition of the sensation is with this correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, text, grammar, claim of the facts with the knowledge by this claimant, period. I just told you that my knowledge comes from my cognition of my sensations. And if you signed up for my webinar on August 8th, 2023 at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Now Space, I will go into that in more depth. Or you can just hop over to my YouTube channel and check out any of the 600 plus videos over there to begin your learning experience. Or you can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. You can find those links, both of them, the YouTube, www.youtube.com forward slash jasonmatthewglass and my email, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com in my bio. We had, I think, one comment. So I appreciate that comment, whoever that was. 
I appreciate the almost 350 likes. Uh, let's see. No one responded to the poll, so I guess I'll end that poll. Because what's the point? Nobody's participating with it. And uh, I do invite you to go over to my YouTube channel where it's much more lively and uh, much more active. Much more participation from people over there. Appreciate everybody out there. Appreciate your follows, your likes, so on and so forth. Hope everybody has a great Now Space Continuum. Bye-bye. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like. And I'll do the same, and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the Join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, the second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, hit the Subscribe button. Hit the Like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.